Here we have a console. Here we have a man. And today this man is going to show you the update method on the easiest possible way to jailbreak your PlayStation 3 console, running on any firmware of your choice, including the most up-to-date one. This method is not a custom firmware. Instead, I will show you how to do it with the Hen jailbreak, as it's far easier, and it's extremely unlikely to get you banned. I could name you a million reasons why you shouldn't get a custom firmware. The main one being most people end up with a bricked console as they don't understand how to properly use it. You won't need to worry about this with the hen jailbreak, and you'll still have all the same features as before. So if downloading a ton of games or annoying people using Modern Warfare 2 mod menus is your thing, then I'm proud to say you found the right video buddy. Leave your boy Bonesy some love in the form of a like and a cheeky subscribe, and let's get right into this video. So first things first is you're going to need all the downloads for the job. Things are done differently from my previous video as we now need to check that our hen update file is not corrupted. This can be done using the MD5 checker application. The link has been provided in the description for this. Also in the description, you will find the links for the Rufus app that we can use the reformat our USB stick to FAT32. If you have a MacBook like me, then I'll show you the alternative method for doing this later. And finally, you'll need the 4.91 hen update file itself, which can be found on the PS exploit site. Alongside it, you will find the MD5 code that we'll use to check our update file later on in the video. Be sure to keep this tab open at all times. Now once we've got all our downloads on our desktop, go ahead and plug in your USB. From here you'll either use Rufus to reformat your USB to FAT32, or if you're Mac you'll go to the search bar, type in Disk Utility, click on your USB, click the Erase button, and from here you will see the option to reformat it to FAT32. Be aware by doing this, all the content on the USB will be deleted. So best get those dodgy files stored somewhere else beforehand. Once our USB is ready, we can now copy over the PS3 file that you downloaded earlier. Make sure you don't just drag the update file alone as we'll need to keep it in the PS3 file itself. Now we can go ahead and load up MD5 Checker. If you're on Mac like me, then there's sadly no real way to check your update file. You can just skip this part of hope for the best. However, if you're on Windows after dragging the update file into the application, you will get the option to insert that code from earlier. After that, you'll get the all good that the file isn't corrupted, and you can shut down the app. This step isn't essential for the jailbreak. It's just to check if it's actually going to work or if you downloaded a dud update file. Now we can go ahead and eject the USB from the computer and head on over to the PS3. Listen up guys, make sure you put your USB in the right hand slot. I've seen so many people saying they can't get it to work only to find out they've been putting it in the left hand slot. Don't be that guy. Now once you're plugged in, you can load up the console and head on over to the system update section. Click on update via storage media and then download the update file. If for some reason it doesn't work, simply go into rest mode and do it that way instead. It always work in rest mode. The download will take a hot minute or two, but once it's done, we can now move on to the next major step. Now, first thing we're going to do is head over to the Internet Explorer application, then press start to type in this URL. It's the PS Exploits main website. Once we're in, we'll need to make this page our home page. You can do this by pressing triangle, going over to the Tools section, and clicking on the Home Page option. From here, you can set this exact page as your home page. Now we'll need to clear out our cookies, history, and cache. We can do this by clicking Triangle again, going to Tools, and clearing all the previously mentioned stuff. Once we've done this now, we're ready for the jailbreak. Congrats on getting this far, big boy. I'm proud. Now, on the PS Exploit page, move your cursor over to the top left-hand corner, where it says PS3 Hen. From here, a drop-down menu will appear. Go ahead and click on the option at the very top called Hen Auto Loader. This page should appear next. From here, go ahead and click on Auto Install Hen and let the magic begin. It'll take a little while and you may well get an error message right at the very end of the install if this happens, then your best bet is to back out of the Internet Explorer app entirely and reload the page, and then just follow the process all over again. It will work the second time, trust me. 
After the download is done, well, your console will probably restart itself, and then you'll notice that you have the official Hen Jailbreak installed. From here, you can quite literally do whatever it is you want to do. Want to mod games like GTA 4 or any Call of Duty Zombies mode? Then you can easily do this with one of the many tutorials on my channel. So you've got your jailbreak installed, what next? Well that's exactly what I'm going to show you now. There are several essential applications that you'll need in order to have a smooth experience while using your jailbroken console. Head over to the links in the description to find apps like Multiman, Webman, and FTP Server. There are so many apps you can download on a jailbroken PS3. However, these are the three I recommend the most to get yourself started. To download them all you'll need to do is copy over each one of the downloads to a USB stick, then head over to Package Manager, from here go to Install Package Files, click on Standard, and all your downloaded homebrew applications will be right here. If you see two of every download, then always download the second option, as the first one will just get an error. Webman is an essential application you'll use to load all of your downloaded games, whether that be a PS2, PS3, PC, or Xbox game. You'll pretty much always use Webman to load them up. Multiman is a multi-purpose application that you can use to download or delete any file on your system. You can also customize many different settings from the Multiman Hub screen. And finally, FTP Server is an essential application that you can use to transfer files from your PC to your PS3 without the use of a USB stick. As USB sticks have a 4 GB limit, people often use this application in order to transfer over large games such as a Call of Duty game. This is pretty much how everybody transfers files to their console these days, so it's an absolutely must. Now, another thing I want to address that many have said is, why are the fans so loud after jailbreaking? Is my console about to f***ing explode? Well, you'll be pleased to know the answer to that question is no, it's absolutely fine. It may sound like it's about to make a beeline for a runway, but don't worry guys, all is good in the hood. Well, that's it, my boy. If you're new around here, then you've only just scratched the surface on what you can actually do with these consoles. It makes them a million times more fun, even in the year 2024. Guys, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button on the way out, and also be sure to keep an eye on the channel for more up-to-date PS3 tutorials coming over the next few weeks. I'm out here updating all the methods, as many of them have now changed from my previous tutorials. If you need any help with any of the steps during this video, then please leave a comment. The PS3 jailbreaking community is one of the best at helping newbies find their footing and get on the right path. Just follow it, step for step, and you shouldn't have any issues at all. I've done this with like 50 consoles now and have never had an issue with the Hen jailbreak. Cheers guys, see you on the next one, and peace.